Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. You're going to meet a Southern Belle who's one of the best studio managers in the game. Candace Stewart oversees the East West Studios and she is just a badass. Um, next week... We are starting the Aw Sounds Global Giveaway. These are headphones we truly love. They're made for creators. It's going to be four winners per week, two different kinds of headphones every week. So get ready to line up for that. That's going to be a good one. Uh, also on July 9th, the NAM University virtual webinar is taking place. It's four days of sessions of all kinds of stuff. Dave and I are going to do a special session Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can get your questions answered. Come hang with us. We're going to share some info. We may have a guest or two, so make sure you put that in your calendar. As always, you can hit us on our socials at Pensado's Place, at Herb Charwick, at Dave Pensado. Sign up for our newsletter, like, and subscribe, and we love you for that. And now, the one, the only, Candace Stewart. What's up, Candace? How you guys? Oh, you know, everything is... uh. Everything's everything. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. How you doing? Uh, Hi, y'all. How y'all doing? You're doing all right. You know, I love hearing that accent, Dave. Bring it on. Absolutely. <laughs> mine, mine no matter what you say with that accent. So we got sorry, Florida, everybody. South Carolina, and Kentucky. There's a lot of Southern going on Okay, here. and remember, just because we're slow talking, we're not slow thinking. Hey, absolutely. Don't, we're we're <laughs> don't, don't make that mistake when dealing with Dave Pensado. He's a genius. Absolutely. So well, you never. Uh, uh, I don't know about that, but you never, you never hear this on the Discovery Channel. You, you always hear a British accent. You never hear, "Why well, there gazelle going to get eaten by that there lion?" <laughs> Who it looks? Always a British accent describing, <laughs> and, and you're happy for the lion to eat the gazelle because it's, it's going to help the cubs. But you never hear a southern accent on those shows. <laughs> you never hear like, "Oh, it looks, oh, it looks like that's, oh, it looks like that tiger's going down." <laughs> Look at that right there over there. You don't hear that. So, oh, hell. Uh, Candace, oh, hell, you know, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we're all obviously dealing with this pandemic thing. I call it kind of the three stages of pandemic. The first it's a bad act, movie. It's all, I, want, I want my money back from this yeah. movie. <laughs> the, first, the first act of the movie is this isn't really happening. The second act is, oh, hell, yes, it is, and it's kicking my ass. And the third act is, how do I survive it and how do I come back? How has East West dealt with all those three acts? Well, uh, you know, I we, we I think our last session was around March 16th before wow. the announcement on March 19th. And uh, obviously we took it seriously, you know, and uh, God bless our owner, Doug Rogers. I got to give him a shout out because he kept everyone fully employed this whole time, you know, right. and uh, people who know... They know of East West. They know that East West Sounds, which is a software sample library company, is our parent company. But we're two separate companies, which I always have to stress. So I always got to, you know, he holds my feet to the fire. I got to make that money. Yes. And, uh, but God bless him because, you know, the runners and the assistants and people like that, it's, uh, you know, even with the unemployment or whatever, it was just really good because you don't want to lose your crew when That's you start right. returning to normal, whatever normal will be and when. Yeah. Right, right, right. Janice, this might be a question. This might be a question hard to answer, but it feels to me like the rush um, in mid March to home studio situations is going to have an impact on the future of the big recording studios. I'll never imagine a time when Christina Aguilera or Drake or Beyonce is going to go to a bedroom studio. I don't see that happening. But how, have you thought about altering your business model so that when the when the when the floodgates open up? There's going to be a rush of people wanting to get stuff mixed, recorded, and everything. Well, How are I you mean, planning differently for that? Well, we have we have a lot. Uh, I'll speak to the safety protocols, but firstly, I'll say that you know how I feel. I, if, you, if you can make good music and you can make it in your house, I'm never upset about that. But I manage a commercial recording studio, so it's uh, it's disheartening at best when I'm hearing streaming. And I'm hearing concerts and people think it sounds okay. And I hope that you would agree with me that a lot of them are subpar audio and don't sound great, you know. Uh, so that's that's a concern. I'm, I'm hoping to do more streaming. I, we did an event with uh, Airborne Toxic Event, 
Mm -hmm. ironic, I know, Mm -hmm. on May 22nd, which was a huge success. And it was very authentic. I have to shout out to Pete Galley, their manager. And the band was great. I I wasn't there. I watched it live on YouTube. But it came out really good. So I think that we ever changing and ever adapting with the acoustic spaces and the size of the rooms that I have, like Studio One, we were often a venue, you know, for video shoots and things like that. So now my goal and idea would be that we'd be doing more streaming and be a venue for streaming where you just have a band and maybe like a two camera crew, mm-hmm. you know, very, very smart. And, we, um, uh, we did a uh, call with, uh, we did a call with Netflix to, to with their multi-camera head and one of their audio heads to see how they were. I need to meet those people, baby. I can hook you up. Yeah, because I do a lot of ADR for Netflix, but I need to do stuff like that. Oh, I can hook you up. And they were, t- we were talking about how they are approaching recording remotely and how we're all facing these challenges, how to do it safely, how to control externally what things need to happen, how to sanitize equipment, get it back and move back and forth. Like there's a, this new normal is a different kind of normal. And I think to your point, we're doing it with the show as well. If you don't evolve your history, yeah, I mean, and 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 also along with Dave said, you know, you ought to always be creative and coming up with ways to book your space. But at the end of the day, a building like mine, it's about the acoustic spaces. So praying and hoping that when people are ready to record again and, you know, whether they're famous or not famous or, you know, have a small budget or a large budget, please. You know, I'm hoping that people will realize, first of all, I think they're just going nuts being isolated. Yeah. So I think in some ways they're just itching and there's been a lot of writing going on and yeah. all those people that can't tour, yeah. hopefully they're going to record. And that, and that's, you know, that's our go-to obviously, but you know, Dave, for a long, long time, and you know, this people have been mixing. Uh-huh. From you just can't do it. You just yeah. can't do a, a, a full band. Yeah. And I wanted to yeah. speak to, if it's timing wise in appropriate now i wanted to speak to what we're doing yeah please as far as the safety protocols i i think i told her you could have knocked me over with a feather when i found out that i was sort of leading the charge <laughs> people who know me will be like what really uh, um, not good. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh talk to maureen droney and you know i started a conversation early on actually in march with fariel at henson and paula at uh, Capital and yeah. Steve at Westlake and Rob at United and Maureen and Tina at the Village and we we're all kind of like holy crap what are we going to do yeah. and uh, everybody was very responsible and everybody was pretty much you know pioneering uh, I just sort of went by the CDC guidelines and then uh, you know kind of cherry picked what was appropriate mm-hmm. uh, first things first was per person room limits yeah I mean to, I think that everyone's aware now this thing's not really going anywhere. I think it's going to be with us for years to come. Yep. Whether there's a vaccine or not, I think like pneumonia, et cetera, you're going to have to, you know, be conscious of how close you get to people, which is a drag because you know I'm a hugger. Yep. But uh, um, yep. Studio One, which is, you know, like 3,000 square feet, you could have 56 people six feet apart. Well, yep. we came up with 20 people as a room limit. Mm-hmm. So, and then uh, Studio Two is like eight people. Studio Three is four people. The what control, do you do in the control rooms? Well, the control rooms are where it becomes difficult because even in my largest control room, Studio One or Studio Five, three people is kind of the max to say safely distance. So that's what we've done. We've said three people in each control room except Studio Three, which is smaller. And we've asked that people wear masks all the time. Um, there's actually a banner on the East West side about all the stuff we're doing. But the, the main things are people enter the building, they take their own temperature and show the gun, the thermometer gun, to my staff who's waiting mm-hmm. on the outside of the baffled area. Yeah. And if the temperature's <laughs> over, right? And it's on a table with, with sterilizer and hand sanitizer. Mm-hmm. And, if they, uh, and if they have a fever over 100, they can't come in. Mm -hmm. And then when they do come in, and this is everybody, this is Cartage, this is anybody, you know, my staff every day uh, doing the same protocol as every client. And then I have three wellness questions that they enter, I mean, that they answer. Mm -hmm. And the answer is no to all three. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And that happens every day. Like even if you had an ongoing session for two weeks, you'd have to do that every, every morning. Every day, every time. So it's, it's, you know, it's tedious. I think it's necessary and it's been important to protect my staff. I don't want to call out any generation over another, <laughs> but, I will just, <laughs> but I will just say that I was surprised to find a lot of the younger people much more frightened and almost paralyzed, honestly, than, than us, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be cavalier, and I won't be, and I won't be glib about it. I, I, you know, I hope this isn't the way that I, I don't think that's the way I go. But that, but that said... You know, I mean, we're the oldest. We got the most, we're the most danger. Yep. You know? And then Herb, you're African-American. You know, you just fall into that just fantastic new group of the all, most vulnerable. All my boxes are checked. Oh, yeah, all your boxes are checked. Yeah, <laughs> so a lot of it has been, I mean, Dave, a lot of it has been kind of talking people out of their tree. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, yeah. and me just saying like, look, you know, I'm not a virologist, but it's got to get in your into you. So yeah. if you're wearing a mask, washing your hands and not getting close to anybody, you're you know, okay. I, I'm not making out with people like I used to. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <Quite dangerous. laughs> but, you know, but it, it's well, not without a test first. You know what I'm saying? Show yeah. me your results, right? Yeah. But I mean, and even though it can live airborne, I think people need to use common sense, not let it destroy their, their creativity. You know, we, you know, I mean, everybody writes good songs and they're depressed. We know that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But we don't want we don't we don't want it to take a you know we don't want it to take more of a toll than it's already taken. Mm -hmm. You know, with mental health and things like that. So, I've been really stringent with it, and a lot of it's been protecting my staff and reassuring my staff, who I adore. You know that I'm going to do everything I can to protect them, and if somebody tries to bust the rules, and you know. Pops out, pops out a couple 40s in the control room and takes off their masks and lights up, a, lights up a blunt. Big Mama's going to come down on them because yeah, absolutely. that's not going to happen. I, we've, we used to allow smoking of various substances, but now we don't allow smoking of anything, period, inside uh -huh. the building. So and the percentage of your business dropped how much? <laughs> it's going to, I think. I think I'm going to lose some of my favorite uh Favorite hip hop clients, but I got I got Studio Five with that big outdoor deck. I'm banking oh, on go. that. There you go. You know, and uh, oh, one thing I've, I meant to tell you, and I know there's controversy about all the UBC stuff. We did go ahead and get UBC lights put into all of our air conditioning units into the building, and it wasn't too expensive. A uh, shout out to AH Flores. Everybody who, everybody who knows, knows they're the studio air conditioning gods Absolutely. of Los Angeles. And these guys have been so, I've worked with them for, man, over 30 years, but they were great. I, I went to them and I asked them a lot of questions and they said, look, this is what hospitals use. And it not only does it kill viruses, it kills mold. Wow. Which is always good. You know? uh, yeah. Um, you always get the mold out of your life for sure. So, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's been, you know, it's been a learning curve for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say the name of the company again? Because I think that's an important piece of information to get out to the studios because that's a big, big issue and impediment yeah. to keep. Yeah, it's uh, A-H, A is in Apple, H is in Ham, Flores, F-L-O-R-E-S, 818-764-0058. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I know that number by heart because my air conditioners have broken down over the past 30 years and called begging for help, especially on a day like today. <laughs> You remember those old school roach bombs where like you put it in the center of the room and you pulled a tab and it would like fog the whole room? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm using. Yeah, you're using those, using. but you're using yeah. those. <laughs> yeah. you, got yeah. no, you got the virus, but you got no roaches. <laughs> I know. I know. No, I mean, there are freestanding units and I, you know, I know how smart you both are. And Dave, I know you were, were weren't you a chemistry major, baby? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, so, uh, oh, geology, that's right. Well, I mean, the freestanding units, like for people were saying to me, oh, yeah, you just used the wand. And I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't make much sense to me because isn't this the spectrum of light that would like alter your chromosomes and fry your skin off your hand? I mean, <laughs> so in, in the air can just, and, people, and it is, it is. I mean, UVA, sun damage, you, you, you know, sunburn, UVB, 
sunburn, skin cancer, UVC chromosome altering radiation. Mm-hmm. So in these air conditioning units, it's important to know that they're completely, they're enclosed. The air goes through and over them at the intake and the outflow inside the duct, but they are not open to the human eye or the human body. <laughs> you should join the CDC. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I love, I, go ahead. What? It's been suggested in the past that it's been suggested in the past that I do alter a few chromosomes. So I'm going to go with the part on that one. <laughs> I, mean, we did. I support my altering of chromosomes. I don't like myself either. We did it. We did a lot in our twenties and thirties. It probably altered plenty of chromosomes all the way around. Speaking of memory lane, you, you, thirty years ago, a beautiful young studio manager gave me free time at Soundcastle. Uh, with Kevin Davis, was that you? I think it was a handsome young engineer producer from Atlanta that just blinded me with some kind of BS. So, I remember <laughs> that, well, that part. I don't remember. I but, think it was some kind of. That's, that's where we first met. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it? I was sucking up. I was. I wanted. I wanted you to move in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, well, let, no. Let's change the subject real quick here. Huh? <laughs> this started. This started to be a. Very uh, spring show here. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I was aware of your of your credits, and uh, I wanted oh, okay. to be a client. I'll, I'll just we'll take I love, it. Back. I love that studio, and Kevin Davis was a. Uh, uh, I'm I'm so glad I got to meet him early in his career. You know, he, he was he was he's still amazing. Yeah, and super nice, super cool, actually. Um, so that studio became private. It's called Pulse now. I was not. I was near there about six months ago, and it's always so crazy for me to drive past that gate because I was there when the riots happened in 1992. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was an interesting time. I cannot tell you how many records I cut at Soundcastle. Yeah, two tons. So I mean, many. probably before and during and after my time. I Shout out to Buddy King, one of the great studio owners. Oh, you know who I talked to the other day, you guys? I gotta I gotta mention I talked to Skip the other day, Skip Sailor. Oh wow, how's he doing? Oh, wow. He sounds fine. He was so great though. He uh he said uh he was so glad the studio was reopening and that we were following the guidelines because nobody should mess with the Vatican. <laughs> he called ah, he six thousand he called six thousand sunset the Vatican. That's great. Let, yeah, me, ask you, let, me, let me ask a technical question. When <laughs> With the Oz, you know, from our chair, we see gear, and the evolution of gear happens daily. All the different manufacturers, all the technology available. How do you guys make decisions at the studio? What you're going to carry? Do you rent things? Does it depend on what the customer wants? You know, you know if we get, I mean, Studio 5 was the last room we brought online about four years ago. The other rooms have obviously been there for, you know, 50 yeah. years. But the gear... You know, other than the consoles, the gear is constantly being upgraded. I don't own a Sony C800, though. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll mention that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get one, but I have a lot of other good things. Um, what happened in 5, which we opened last, and it was predominantly going to be a mix room, ended up being a vocal room, which is fine. Things like the Bracosti Reverb, you know, CL1Bs, you know, things that we saw people using in their chains all the time. But to be honest... I mean, outboard gear notwithstanding, you know, we've got real Fairchilds, blah, 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 not to brag, plates, right. chambers, et cetera. But obviously it's the plugins yep. that is the constant updating yep. and financial, you know, consideration of a studio between Pro Tools and everything. Now, the lucky thing about you and me and you <laughs> is that we've known all these people for a really long time. So, you know, if you need a favor you know, you need a discount or something. All the dealers are so great. You know, I mean, I, I just have such love for the man. I have love for everybody, but the manufacturers, you know, Ivana and the people at UA, Erica and Bill Putnam yep. Jr. I mean, his dad built my building. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's, so there's, there's a lot of history there. So it's funny that you mentioned it, though, because I just recently updated all my waves updated all my ua stuff mm-hmm. went in and had to buy some buy a bunch of stuff uh you know wanted to set up a spare rig to have sort of like a you know just a small production rig that i can move around mm-hmm. um, one thing i've noticed with this dave is that with people distancing you've got sometimes 
even more than we used to, where an artist wants to be upstairs in that upstairs lounge doing their own production while the mixer is downstairs in the control room. You know? yep. So just whatever, whatever really makes it easier for people to create. You know, I think that's the, all of us feel that way. Whatever facilitates people creating. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, but we keep up. Candace, uh, uh, East West, um, deservedly so, is, is, is one of the pioneering rooms of, uh, in all the world. And Putnam was, uh, was brilliant, way ahead of his time. <clears throat> and for those of you that don't know, his son is running UA, and I guess he owns it, and uh, uh, UAD. Um, and can you just real briefly uh, give me like like five top names that, that recorded there when it was called, um, what was it called? United? It was called Western. Yeah, We and, were Western uh, and uh, United is still United right down the street. They were together as one unit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Our building is... Uh, that area right. confuses me. <laughs> yeah. Our building is the Western but, but, building. But all I remember is Jack Joseph Puig surrounded by a mound of beautifully lit gear, you know? Yeah. But, but uh, tell us some of the highlights of, of that, that our, our audience under 30 might remember. Oh, I don't know of the under 30 crowd. The over 30 crowd, I think it kicked off with Sinatra, and that's important to note because Quincy Jones and Ben Crosby and Frank actually got Bill to come out from Chicago. And they got him to build the rooms. And Frank, of course, was under contract at EMI, which uh, so Paula and I always talk about this. We always say we shared Frank because when he left Capitol in 1960, 1960, I think 61 or 62, he started reprise in my building upstairs. Oh, did he really? And so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and the bill, and then Bill, besides being an acoustic designer and an engineer, everybody knows, or you know, that he built gear. So, and that was also made in the room. We always say that the 1176s and uh, LA 2As ran around the world and came back because they were wow. all built. They were all built upstairs. Wow. But, but wow. Uh, you know, the original, the original units. But um, Frank Sinatra is a big one. We still use that podium every day uh, at the Elvis comeback special in 1968. <laughs> uh, right when he came back from the army. Uh, Pet Sounds, the Beach Boys, um, Mamas and Papas. You know, I mean, uh, God, I can't believe I just forgot his name. The famous producer. Have you seen Echo in the Canyon? Mm-mm. You've got Mm-mm. to see this movie, this documentary. Oh, right? that's about Laurel Canyon. That's, that's about Laurel Canyon, right? Well, Laurel Canyon is Laurel Canyon, and I think that's Netflix. Oh, there's a movie that Andy Slater did called Echo in the Canyon with Jacob Dylan, mm. and they've got like Roger McGuinn and David Crosby and everybody, but and and Stephen Stills, you know. And so they're showing like Glenn Campbell came out of my building. But for you under thirty crowd, <laughs> we'll just ramp it forward about you know, yeah, 30, 30 years, and uh, you know the Red Hot Chili Peppers, God bless them. A lot of Tom Petty, Rolling Stones, Elton John. Uh, Rage Against the Machine, then Audio Slave. Uh, a lot of stuff with Rick Rubin, you know, and Rick has his room, uh, you know, Shangri La now, but every now and then I'll see him and I'll see people from that camp that still come in, and, but like Greg Fiddleman, who I love, mm-hmm. comes in and books time, but and Dave Schiffman. You know, there's a whole, you know, generational crew that came out from uh, Jim Scott, of course, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but yeah, we uh, modern stuff now. We do a lot of we do a lot of hip hop. You know, we have a lot of stuff on Gaga's new record. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, no, I was I didn't really know. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, <laughs> part, I don't know, like part what? Of your, part cool. of your DNA that I think speaks to that is you're just naturally artist friendly. Like I think artists, you know, I've seen some interaction like you and McCartney and other people. You know. Uh. People, People who, you know, Snoop and Pharrell and, you know, I think people who allow themselves to trust only put themselves in hands that they can count on. That means means a heck of a lot to me hearing you say that. In in knowing you, so when you take this incredible Philip Stark building and the level of sort of specificity that you guys do with gear and rooms and the other kinds of things, it's not the same if your staff doesn't really know how to, make an artist feel safe so they can be their best. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. I mean, my management style, I always say I'm a benevolent dictator. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You know, You're um, the Southern bell who will give you hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, and Dave, you can relate to this as well for 
your time at Larrabee and all the studios that you've been at and stuff like that. I mean, it's not about us. You know, it's really not. It's about the artist and it's kind of about getting out of their way and letting them do their thing and yeah. giving them the tools that they need to do their thing. Um, and and you're right. It is about relationships. I mean, Rose Mann, the grand dame of my world. No, absolutely. And, and, and she, yeah. you know, she did it best. I mean, she, she was hospitable. She was smart. She was yeah. cool. A good hang. Absolutely. You know? And so yeah, I, I feel honored to kind of have followed in those footsteps. And I talked to Paula today. Uh, oh, cool. We've uh, been competitors and friends for, you know, 30 years. So. Yeah, yeah. Are your studio services part of the other thing that differentiates you? Cause you guys will go. Well, to the degree. You know, one would hope. I mean, yes. uh, one thing that, you know, Doug, when he had Philip Scott start come in and do the redesign of all the lounges, I mean, I would have been fine with the new, new bathrooms, right? You know, but Philip, Philip Stark and all the cool decor and everything. Those of you who don't know who Philip Stark is, look at our website, but go to the SLS hotel, you know, yes. there's, a, there's a horse with a lamp in its back and, you know, yeah. My Game of Thrones chair and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but it's, it's you know, kind of, uh, some people you know, think it looks a little like a nightclub, sort of, but then you walk into you walk into that sort of modern setting, and then you go into the studio, which is very functional and very yeah. much, you know, 60 years old. Not in a bad way, 60 years old, yeah. but yeah. definitely old school. So uh, I guess the best of both, but you know, service, dude, is very important to me. And I want to say this to everybody watching this show. Do not use these new regulations and these new protocols as an excuse not to give service. Right. Because that is that is unacceptable. Yeah. You yep. know, we, we, we're all in this together and, you know, we're all human beings mm -hmm. and I would, and I want to protect my staff. I want to protect my clients, but, you know, when it's safe to do so, will I go pick up food for my clients? Of course. Absolutely. You know, uh, well, I do, you know, other than not letting them smoke and making them follow these rules, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm there to help. Yeah, absolutely. Life continues on. You know, yeah. uh, it, it seems, it, it seems to me, um, it seems to me that the, uh, the studio business at your level is all, is mostly about lounges and staff because <laughs> everybody has the same, you know, same consoles, the same everything. But the, what distinguishes the, the greats is 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 the the management, the lounges, and the staff. And and I've I've seen that happen all the time. I've I've worked at big studios, and I know I won't name names, but I was working with um, someone who who should have been let in but wasn't let in, and he was the artist I was working with. Oh yeah. And you can't you can't do stuff like that. And this was a major studio. Well, and, and it falls um, it falls it falls from management on down too. I mean, if I don't get the information I'm supposed to get, or if the client doesn't communicate with me, uh, you know, I mean, I can't really fault my staff. But that said, I mean, you know, <laughs> people have to be fluid. You know, you can't be rigid and not let the artist in. What kind of nonsense is that? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> well, this particular, artist, this particular artist had about a hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry on. Showed up in a Lamborghini. Was well dressed, well spoken, and um, um, it was pretty obvious that this guy was a star. We, you know, well, you know they didn't they didn't let Paul McCartney into that after Grammy party that night at the Ivar Theater. That's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. Bad about that. Morocco, you know, are interns still an important part? They are, they are, and I and I work with uh, my two favorite schools, and I can't say it at the same time, so forgive me, both of you. I'll, I'll mention Crass first in, in Tempe, Arizona, mm -hmm. the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences, of which I'm the chairman of their advisory board. Woo, woo. Sure. And then Blackbird Academy, John, yep. uh, what can I say? I, I love you. I love Blackbird. your school. I love everything about you. Yeah. Yeah. And their curriculums, yeah. I mean, you know, I think it's important to the people that are watching your show, especially younger people, if they imagine that anything's changed. And Dave, back me up on this. I mean, gear is gear and tools are tools. But, you know, you have to you have to learn how to use that gear, learn how to use those tools, and you have to learn how to hang. You know, you got to be a good yeah. assistant, a yeah. good runner. You know, you got to have a good vibe. And uh, that's one of the yeah. things I talk to my staff about, you know, like yeah. people can people can hear you smiling when you answer the phone is something that I say. Yeah. 
Yeah. Also, um, it's um, um, if you, it, it, it happens time and time again on the show where a guest will say, "Yeah, I was, I was, I was a, um, I was an advanced runner. I was kind of working my way up to assistant, and the engineer couldn't make it on Easter, and that's how Jimmy Ivan got his start in the business because he, he came and, yeah. and did the session with uh, John Lennon. I think it was John Lennon. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I think. I think you know. That hasn't um, changed. Luck is where. Luck is where. Well, timing. Thing, Herb, where preparation meets opportunity, or something. That's luck. Yeah, um, timing, and never saying uh, no. You know, if you're if you're an aspiring, you know, runner intern, and the schools are fantastic. The schools give you. I think we'd agree. We didn't have schools when we started. I I started as an. Uh, I've been learning from my brother as an assistant before I was a manager. I just didn't think I was going to be a great engineer, and I had a huge ego, so I quit. <laughs> but uh, now I sometimes wish I'd st- stayed an engineer. But uh, that said, I mean. You now have a basic understanding. I always use the analogy. It's like when you're an intern in medical school and you go from doing your rounds in the hospital to you're in the operating room and there's a head in your hands. There's there's nothing like the doing of the job. School is school and school can give you fundamentals and basics. Mm -hmm. But doing the job is the, I always say it's continuing ed, Dave. I say when you come and do an internship at East West that it's, and it is continuing ed because you're getting academic credit, but yeah, continuing ed. And the better schools, I mean, obviously Blackbird has been a friend of ours forever. We've spoken at Crass. They want us to come every year. Oh, I'd love to go with you. That'd be so fun. We almost, we almost did that before this happened. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, no, we were going to be there at the same time. But the things that we noticed, and we've spoken at a lot of different schools, is the ones that give you practical application. They put yeah. the head in your hands at the school, yeah. from the classroom into the studio and learn. Those are the guys and ladies that come out and absolutely rock it when they get to an East-West or whatever the case may be. Well, hey, Candace, tell me if you think this is good advice, because um, I give this advice to a lot of interns. Um, when, when, you, when you're accepted as an intern, study the, the habits and patterns of the person that can get you promoted and that's the studio manager so so note what time the studio manager gets to gets, uh, comes in and and what path she takes and all the good studio managers are she's what path <laughs> she takes to, to her office and then uh, just happen to have a a, a a special in your back pocket and be chewing some chewing gum and so three minutes before she comes in put the chewing gum on the floor and mash it into the floor on the same route that she comes and let her see you scraping up chewing gum with your own spatula. Dude, I, I love and the calculated. I promise you you'll get promoted to assistant right I, away. I love the calculated <laughs> nature of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you gotta be your own, <laughs> you gotta be your own advocate, right? I mean, uh, was the joke? Someone you told me. Find a way to get ahead. Yeah. Well, people who think that they're not. self-employed. Yeah. People who don't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people who don't think they're, they're self-employed don't understand what work is because the truth of it is yeah. even if you're an employee you're still working for yourself promoting your career and you were talking about you know people uh, rising up the trajectory is the same i mean it's right place right time people that were protégés working with you you know manny or uh, jason joshua those mm-hmm. guys fantastically talented guys you know you got to pay attention to everything mm-hmm. but i tell the guys that it's a fuzzy shark tank and that they're and that when they suck up as a runner, when they suck up to or an intern, when they suck up to the assistants, that if they ha- and the assistants start for, when the assistant starts firsting and requesting that runner to be their assistant, that's exactly how it goes, and that's how it goes East West, yeah. and that's been for me always. Yeah, and still yeah. to this day, and also goes that way as you go up the ladder. You can be very successful and have right place, right time happen. You can't ever lose the gear of. One, you're an entrepreneur. If you work in our business, I don't care. If you work for somebody, you have to know how to self-build your business and self-build your brand. Our team hears a lot from me about being brand, and I'm kind of an asshole about it. No, it's a big deal. And And if you let it go, if you let it go, you hurt everybody on the team. And ultimately, you take that all the way through your career till your career is done. The best you well. Well, both of you, and Lawrence Malchow, shout out to my chief engineer. He says this when we meet with the staff, and my assistant, Keith, who's amazing. He's but great. He's great. But Lawrence is, is a genius. He's an engineer. He always says, he goes, look, it's no different. 
He goes, when you're a runner, when you're an assistant, you're sucking up to the first. When you're the first engineer, you're dealing with the producer and the artist. You know, it's always about the artist. When you're the producer, you know, it's about the artist. So it's, it doesn't change. You know, you just have to, you have to, I don't want to say know your place, but I will. You have to know your place. You have to understand what your role is in the chain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where you fall. And and you just basically have to get it done. Absolutely. And in the <laughs> business of audio, the biggest tool that you can use is your ears. Listen, stop talking. Yeah. Listen, learn, get kind critically, of... Critically listen. Yeah, absolutely. Both okay. to music and also the business of what's going on. You know, absolutely. When, when people are willing to talk in front of you, that's a sign that you're learning. People are very selective about who they will have in the conversation or not. And if you find yourself out of the conversation or not, your tops aren't up yet. So yeah, you yeah. So you, you got to learn that 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 third eye. It, it is it is that true. Fly, we always say the fly on the wall, right, Dave? Like seen and not heard. Yeah. So we already talked about streaming and other kinds of things. Basically, do you just stay on your toes and figure out between having the real estate and the rooms and how people change where you strike and where the opportunity is? Yeah, I mean, what I've been doing during this whole time is just been reaching out to people and staying in touch with every label person, every client, you know, yeah. old and new, to see how they're doing, you know. Yeah. not not. I mean, not just totally to, you know, get business, but to see how they're doing and letting them know that we're here when they're ready to come back. Yeah, I'm praying, you know, I mean, my building is what it is. You know what I mean? I don't... I don't want to ever see it be anything different. You know, I want those acoustic spaces to be used to make music. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, I don't mind being a location for a film shoot every now and then, but I don't want to not have audio being recorded in that building. So my job is to try to, you know, right. I, so my job is yeah. to just really, my job is to just really find out who the new A&R people are, find out who the charting artists are. Mm -hmm. uh, God bless all the trades, you know, uh, A&R registry and music connection, everybody, everyone in our industry. I mean, it really is a community. And I think yeah. the publishers, the labels, you know, if there was ever an adversarial feeling and over the years, I mean, there's been, you know, like labels are like, Arr. you yeah. know, but at the end of the day, everybody needs each other. You know, so, and I think this is, without sounding like, oh, hippie, I think this has been one positive thing that's come out of all of this. Oh, absolutely. Is everybody realizing absolutely. how interconnected and how interdependent we all are on each other. Even if you're working at home, you know, someone's got oh, to I've, email you the tracks. <laughs> I've reached out to more people, got in touch with more people, been connected more, than, and actually been drafted into more either board opportunities or how do we solve this? I had a big conversation yesterday with people that are gathering like like the most major managers in town about how to approach labels and they want it. it's old school advice. But there the community has been the covers have been pulled back because yeah. of this. And people are saying, wait, we get through this together. Like it does take a village. It absolutely, and, and absolutely. And I think and it's and great. the studios I I had written the mayor's office kind of early on in late April, and I was a, and I know Garcetti from when he was our councilman. And he helped me with some things I needed when they were building Emerson next door. Oh right, uh. Uh, and he was lovely, you know. And and I reached out a couple times, and I'm like, look, you know, we're the we're the we're the backbone of of the movie industry. We're the backbone of the television industry. You know, we're not just music for records. We're okay. score and underscore and ADR and and then there's the foley stages. I mean, so there's so many things that happen um, behind the scenes that we are aware of that we know goes into the making of all of this all this product. Mm -hmm. You know, and I appealed to to him and said, look, you know we're not the same as a film crew of 200 people. That's right. You know, please. And we have, we have this space, you know, I sent my blueprint mm -hmm. and I said, we have this space, <laughs> with, you know, 9,000 square. And he knows that he's been there, but I'm like, it's like 9,000 square feet on the bottoms. As you can see, people can be far apart because in the early stages, I don't know if you guys remember this, they were talking about for film shoots and they still haven't reopened or for film production, but they were talking about going in, setting up the set, and then leave him for three days. Yep. Well, we can't do that in recording, baby. 
So, <laughs> we don't have those kind of budgets. We don't have the budgets, uh, you know, a hundred million dollar budget that a, that a film has, yep. you know, or a major motion picture has. So, yep. you know, I want to give a shout out to Peter Rotter and a lot of the contractors, John Acosta from the union. I was honored. You were mentioning that people have been including you on boards and discussions. Mm -hmm. I was really honored to be included in a group of some other studio managers and people from the RMA and the musicians union of which we've all know there's been, Mm -hmm. difficulties in the past because of the laws in California and the way that unions work here in California. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, the mem they want their membership to be playing. So they asked me early on and Peter Rotter was so great. He spearheaded this. Uh, he's a contractor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, so how many people are you going to let come in? And I said, well, the maximum is 20 in studio one at any one time. So what that means is if you want to do a 60 piece, do a single three-hour session with those 20 people, they leave, everybody else comes in, gets their temperature taken, does the whole routine, and yeah. then they come in. So composers, I've actually talked to a few composers, they've been rethinking how they're scoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a we lot of stuff's to, gone out of country. We talked to some <laughs> local producers, um, one who just did Gaga, which you know, and Kook and others, and they're, everybody's rethinking how they approach this. And I think some interesting opportunities have come out of it. Like the pandemic has a bunch of bad stuff, but it also has some things that are good things. Oh, yeah, I, and I think that the good thing is, is how people respond in a time of crisis. Yeah. How, how people band together and realize what's actually important. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I call it the good old American spirit. Like you learn to live with something and adapt. You yeah. don't let it kick your ass, you know. Like that's just not. That's, that's just, not how we. That's not how we do. That's not how we roll. I look at I look at studios, and I'm I'm not trying to be corny or flippant or anything, but I look at them kind of as a spiritual place. You know what I'm saying? They're they're, they're I don't want to blaspheme because I'm a religious person, but they're the they're the musical equivalent of, of a church to me. So even if I do work at home, I I, I, I drop by studios because that's that's where my heart is. You know, and that's yeah. where. I could, it's Very funny you say that. I call it the cathedral of creativity. That's what I call East West. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I call it the and cathedral. Right now, and right now, more than ever, creativity is so hard to have because of the lack of focus that we have or that I have based on, yeah. on what's going on. It's, it's, uh, I used to be able to focus like, like a laser beam for six hours. Now I can't even go probably an hour. And then my mind wanders, you know. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think you just, it's uh, anytime anybody's too much in their own head, you know, I mean, we're, we're social animals uh, by nature. And if we can't be together, like you said, we adapt her I mean, doing Zoom. I had a Zoom birthday party. It was incredible. My birthday is tax day. Well, it would have been tax day, right. except the tax day got postponed. My birthday is April 15th. I turned 61. 61. I'm April, I'm April 7th. Oh, that's right. Aries, man. Aries. And, uh, and it was so fun because it was, it was a, you'll edit this out. It was a shit show because everybody was talking and we were all just starting to learn how to zoom and everything. And, uh, Ivana Manley <laughs> played saxophone. I mean, I was blown away. I, I cried. I cried. I was knocked out. Everybody was fantastic, you know? Uh, and also, you know, we have been advising people in the beginning, we put together a pandemic plan. And the long and short of it, so it's not boring, is we were saying, here's some resources, but social distancing doesn't mean emotional distancing. Exactly. You've got to go do stuff. I get out. I get around. I, I take care of myself. I don't have to get involved with oh. anybody else. So that, so that the difference is not so huge that it starts to mess with you. And I find most people out are doing the same thing. You know, I don't have to go far from where I live, but yeah. to just sit in here and freak out is not the way yeah, cause you'll, you'll go crazy. And that's what I was talking earlier when we first started about some of my staff, like there was a couple people, I will not mention their names. They know who they are if they watch this mm -hmm. and they, they're like, I haven't even left my house for like 17 days. I'm like, okay, get a get mask, out. walk outside, get out. walk down the street. The weather was so gorgeous. Yeah. You know? Like yeah. and amazing. And I'm like, I've been going to the Burbank bike path and I wear a mask. Sometimes I take my dog and I'm up. Y'all both know that I hurt my leg and we've all, yeah. we've all been through the ringer with our injuries over the years as oh, friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm up to doing like four and a half, five miles. I'm walking, I'm not running, but you. I'm doing that three or four times a week and I'm just getting bigger and sassier, but, <laughs> but I'm getting stronger. And sexier. And well, sexier. I hope, I don't know no. about that. But I'm getting stronger, and you know, and I noticed it's kind of in us now. I want to mention this: people 
are, for the most part, very respectful. And as they're walking by on the path, I, I have my mask on as someone's Absolutely. walking by. If I'm alone, I take it off because I want to breathe some fresh air. Right. But people just naturally distance. You know, they yep. smile at you and they kind of cruise the other way, you know, which is, that is the new normal. The new normal is that people go, <laughs> and they walk over I, here, you know. I think, I think to the audience, to make sure, you know, it stays centered, best practices include emotional best practices, not yeah. just studio best practices. It's important to connect and collaborate and Absolutely. create. It's important that you try to have your life be reasonably functional in the new way. You have the gear, you have the tools, you have the ability to connect. It, this, this, we are in the space, you know, in our talks at Blackbird or Crass or whatever, uh, to your point earlier, you know, I always say uh, there's no place in the world that's silent. And that means audio is critical to everything. We are actually on the lip of the wave of things that should be doing. So take this time to make your creativity better, to connect with the person that you haven't connected with. You are, be aggressive through this. Don't sit back and let it consume you. Yeah. Lead it, right? Don't, don't be passive. I mean, somebody, I can't remember who said this. Uh, uh, they said, you know, call five people a day minimum. Mm-hmm. And this isn't even for business calls. Yeah, this just, is just like check, in. Re check in on people. Oh, yeah. Especially older people or your or your relatives that you haven't talked to. My brothers, uh, you'll always hear me talk about my brothers because they were engineers and kind of got me into this crazy world. Yeah. And my, my brother Rick's in Hawaii. My brother Steve's in Seattle. He's still an engineer. He's doing great. My brother David's here. He's a photographer. And we've been doing these. Uh, my maiden name is Smith. So we've been doing the Smith sibling Zoom every Sunday night. Oh, and I love man, it. Man. Love it. Oh. <laughs> Nobody has the experience that your siblings have with you. None. And you no. only children, that's okay too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, those of you who have siblings, you know this to be true. Yeah. You know, nobody had that experience. So it's been really cool. And our parents are both gone, our mom and dad. So we've been recording our Zoom uh, things. And they were, you know, my brother was nine before I was born. So all kinds of stuff happened before I came along. Wow. And our dad was an electrical engineer, you know. And so he built their speakers and they had a band, you know. It was uh, oh, it's all it's all important. These reconnections to your to your family and these reconnections to the people that you love, you know. You know, before Dave, I love you guys. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? And actually, before Dave takes us home, the one thing that I want to point out is what the audience is seeing in you, and the fact that it's optimistic, and you figure out how to evolve, but you keep the love of your craft and the passion for what we do. First and foremost, serving people as opposed to taking up all the oxygen. Those are the things that get you through everything. And shout out to Doug for continuing to. Absolutely. To oh, my goodness. So, so amazing. He's such a lovely guy. That's a huge thing. I mean, we're all privileged. Yes. All of us. Yes. You know what I mean? And if you don't see it that way, get out. People, yeah, get out. People that are watching this, if you think it's about you and you're all that and this, that, and the other, I mean, that'll last for a while. Yeah. But okay. that won't give you longevity. <laughs> about, about two minutes. And, and then you're going to get yeah. your feet taken out from you. So, you know, we love you. We texted. Oh, I just like, cherish you guys so much. And, and Dave, you look, and I love the Beastie Boys shirt. I love the Beastie Boys. I made a COVID-19 I playlist. I want it. I want one, Herb. I want, I want one. one, too. I got a few. And you dude. know, Herb, sit where all you see is the Beastie right at the bottom of the screen. That's oh, so that's, cool. that's a plan. It's because, so awesome. Because well, I got to okay, go from got this. To to go downstairs and do battle ropes. So that's what I got for my birthday is battle ropes. So I go down to the garage and do battle ropes. For you know, I've been working out a lot. I was doing Pilates before this happened in a class of like three people. And now I'm doing it here. I can't believe I ever put down Pilates videos because I tell you, they kick your ass. So. Kick your ass. <laughs> and look, look what it's done for Al Schmidt. Oh, he's amazing. Amazing. Had his 90th birthday on Zoom. No joke. Yeah. Um, and Pete Bell still doing the audio lunch on Zoom. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, we love you, Candace. You know, I you love you guys so here. much. And just I tell Keith and the family and Doug, we all said, "Hey, I okay. will, I will," and I'll stay in touch with you guys and let you know. I, I see it's it's rolling out a little slower than I had hoped, but yeah. I just want to reassure everyone that we're here for them and that you know we're just careful, like you said, careful following best practices and using our heads, not letting, not getting upset. Absolutely, you know, helping each other through it. Dave, take us home. 
Well, I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight, uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm going to recap a couple of things that Herb and, and uh, Candace said, and I'm going to incorporate those. And the reason I'm doing this is so you can call me on it when you see that I don't do it. But I'm going to do six people a day instead of five, call them and no, nothing about work, just call friends and family. Then I'm going to do more, more Zooms with my family. I've got family all over the world, so it makes it too easy for me not to take advantage of the time and the, and the technology. And then um, I'm going to leave the house more. It, it, it got a little hard for me to leave the house because I, I was afraid of trees. I was afraid of everything. And, and uh, today I was a little late to get to the show because I, I spent the morning out from the house and it felt so good. So I'm going to benefit from this show more than anyone, and I'm going to incorporate all the things I've learned from Candace and her. Uh, as we go forward, and I suggest you replay it again and take some notes like I did and then and, and, uh, some good information. Stay safe, stay watching the show, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.